Hey friends, Derek from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So lesson number three for Zion people is found section 58 verses 42 and 43. Very simple doctrine. Well, simple in reading, simple in application. That's a little bit different. Behold, he who has repented of his sins, the same is forgiven and I, the Lord, remember them no more. That phrase is such a great phrase. I mean, the Lord is perfect. He has a perfect memory and he chooses to forget our sins that we have repented of and remember them no more. It would be well with us to do the same. Uh, that's a great principle. Verse 43, by this ye may know that if a man repenteth of his sins, behold, he will confess them and forsake them. See that? I don't know what's harder to do, confessing or forsaking. They both are different. Repenting is you, you're going to you're gonna never do it again, but confessing them and forsaking them. Uh, again, having served as a bishop, Nobody really wants to hear other people's sins. They don't want to hear that. It's not like I geared up. I'm like, woohoo, more sins today. That's not what I enjoy. Now, I don't like seeing and I don't like hearing those things, but it is essential to be able to lift that burden off a person's shoulders. And a bishop holds those priesthood keys to be able to help that person repent. In fact, one of my favorite messages about this idea of confessing and forsaking is from Elder Renlund, and this is such a good message, and you'll notice these verses shared in here, so watch this. When I was 12 years old, my family lived in Göteborg, a coastal city in southern Sweden. We attended church in a large, remodeled home. One Sunday, my friend Stefan, the only other deacon in the branch, greeted me at church with some excitement. We went to the chapel's adjacent overflow area and he pulled from his pocket a large firecracker and some matches. In an act of youthful bravado, I took the firecracker and lit the long fuse. I intended to snuff out the fuse before it blew up. But when I burned my fingers trying to do so, I dropped the firecracker. Stefan and I watched in horror as the fuse continued to burn. The firecracker exploded and sulfurous fumes filled the overflow area and the chapel. We hurriedly gathered up the scattered remnants of the firecracker and opened the windows to try to get the smell out, naively hoping that no one would notice. Fortunately, no one was hurt and no damage was done. As members came to the meeting, they did notice the overpowering smell. It was hard to miss. The smell distracted from the sacred nature of the meeting. Because there were so few ironic priesthood holders, and in what can only be described as dissociative thinking, I passed the sacrament. Yet I didn't feel worthy to partake of it. I felt horrible. I was embarrassed and I knew that what I had done had displeased God. After church, the branch president asked me to come to his office. After I sat down, he looked at me kindly and said he had noticed that I hadn't partaken of the sacrament. He asked why. I suspect he knew why. I was sure everyone knew what I had done. After I told him, he asked how I felt. Through tears, I haltingly told him I was sorry and that I knew I'd let God down. President Lindbergh opened a well-worn copy of the Doctrine and Covenants and asked me to read some underlined verses. I read the following out loud. Behold, he who has repented of his sins, the same is forgiven, and I, the Lord, remember them no more. By this ye may know, if a man repenteth of his sins, behold, he will confess them and forsake them. I will never forget President Lindbergh's compassionate smile when I looked up after I'd finished reading. With some emotion, he told me that he felt it would be fine for me to resume partaking of the sacrament. Thank you. As I left his office, I felt indescribable joy. Such joy is one of the inherent results of repentance. 
Jesus Christ can forgive because he paid the price for our sins. Our Redeemer chooses to forgive because of his incomparable compassion, mercy, and love. Our Savior wants to forgive because this is one of his divine attributes. And like the good shepherd he is, he is joyful when we choose to repent. I invite you to feel more joy in your life. Joy in the knowledge that the atonement of Jesus Christ is real. Joy in the Savior's ability, willingness, and desire to forgive. And joy in choosing to repent. Such a good message. I absolutely love that. He that will confess them and forsake them, I, the Lord, will remember them no more. A perfect memory will not remember them. So it would be well with us to not remember them as well. Boy K. Packer said this, and I love this message. No matter what our transgressions have been, no matter how much our actions may have hurt others, that guilt can all be wiped out. To me, perhaps the most beautiful phrase in all of Scripture is when the Lord said, Behold, he who has repented of his sins, the same is forgiven, and I, the Lord, remember them no more. You know, I really don't know what else to say. That promise is there, and it is real, and I know it's true. Hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and thanks for sharing. Godspeed. See you guys tomorrow with number four. Bye-bye.